Hello and welcome to the CYF course. Today we continue in the series of vision for the family. This is the fourth part and the theme of today is getting back to the biblical foundations, the roots and seeing what was Adam and Eve's mission that was to tend and keep their garden. And we'll see how it relates with two families. So let's go back to Genesis 1. We see in Genesis 1 that God created man, male and female, he created them. And so there is a reflection of the image of God. He created them after his own image, in his likeness. So the first mission of man after creation is to carry the image of God. And this carrying of the image of God is not just Adam by himself, it's Adam and Eve together. It's this togetherness, this unity in diversity that reflects who God is, because God is three in one. So there is a reflection on earth of what is in heaven. And this is new, this is the first time. And this is just beautiful. First mission, carrying the image of God. Second mission, God blessed them and said, be fruitful, grow, multiply, fill the earth. So there was a mandate to cover the earth. And this is not just about making babies everywhere. It's not just about the physical element. This is about this image of God that I've put in you, that I want you to carry over all the earth. You see, this is already the great commission before, before time, in the, in the beginning of creation. There is this mandate of bringing the image of God throughout all the earth. The third mandate is to rule. And you shall rule over every bird, every fish in the water, every creeping and living creature in the field, you should rule. So there is a calling to rule over humanity. We are called to rule. And this is something we find until the end of the Bible to Revelation. We are called to rule with Christ and we will rule with him forever and ever. So this was here from the beginning. So we see that in Genesis 1, God is giving Adam a threefold mandate. Carry my image, bring my image over all the earth, and rule with me, exercise an influence. This is Genesis 1. So if Adam and Eve were wywamers, it would happen a bit like that. Oh, we need to go over all the earth to carry the image of God. So let's go two weeks here, one week here, one month here, a lot of short-term things everywhere. But that was not really what God had in mind. It, it was a long-term process to cover the whole earth. Because in Genesis 2, God told them, I want you to start with your garden. Actually, it's very interesting. Eve was not created yet. But God put Adam in a garden so he could tend it and keep it. So there was work to do. And after he gave him a mate, a spouse that can be his complement and so they can be a team working together. So it's very interesting to see what God, God is doing here. Because these two words are very interesting, tending and keeping. God asked Adam to start in his garden by tending it and keeping it. In the beginning I thought it was just the first agriculture in the world. And Adam was just to cultivate his little tomatoes or pineapples. And it was quite easy because that was before the fall, so no sweat on the bro. Uh, it, yeah, I think work was easy at the time. But I believe now that these two verbs has much deeper implication than just the physical work. So let's dig a little bit into them. In Hebrew, to tend is the verb abad. Abad means literally to serve, to work, to make fruit fructify, to make multiply, and to draw the best out of the potential of the soil. And this is very interesting. It speaks about maximizing the potential. And this speaks to us about the cooperation between God and men. And you can see that in many aspects in the nature around us. For instance, with trees. You can let the tree grow as, he, as it wants. It will bear fruits, but there will be little fruits. But if you start 
to prune some branches at the right seasons. What will happen? The other branches will grow stronger, the fruit will be bigger. So it's cooperation. God is bringing life, is creating the tree, but by man's intervention, the potential of bearing fruit of the tree is multiplied. This is cooperation, co-creating with God. This is amazing. You can see the same with the children. God gives you children, but after, by your intervention and the way you rear them as parents, you can maximize the potential of what God has put into them. I have five children. All of them are very different. And God has given us very different characters. And we cannot just rely on tricks or recipes because we need the Holy Spirit to lead us for each one of them. But we want to work on maximizing the potential of each one of our children. It's about co-creating. So Abad means really to work, to make fructify, to make the best come out of a soil. And then the second verb is also very interesting, shamar. Shamar means literally protecting, building a wall or a hedge around. It speaks about a real defense around the garden. And it speaks to us about an enemy that is here that should not be able to come in. And this is very interesting. So Adam, before Eve was created, was called to tend, to draw the best out of his garden, and to protect, to keep, to build a wall around the garden. So the snake, the enemy, could not enter. This is very interesting. What happened in chapter 3? Well, actually, Eve now is here, and Adam has shared with Eve about God's command. And we see the snake coming and starting to seduce Eve, saying, Oh, did God really say that you cannot eat from all the fruits of the garden? And they start to talk together, and finally, Eve eats the fruit. And for centuries we've said, Oh, the fall. It's because of the woman. She is the weak link. She is so easily seducible. But at one point I asked myself, where was the man when Eve ate the fruit? And for years I thought, oh, certainly man was at work. And Eve was at home doing nothing, being idle. She had time to listen to the snakes. You know, we have so many prejudices about this kind of passage. Then I read it again. And I saw that it ate the fruit, and she gave it to her husband, who was right next to her. That means Adam was here the whole time. And I remind you, Eve was not even created when Adam received the instructions from God. Adam was responsible. And I'd like to suggest that before Eve sinned even one time, Adam had sinned four times. First time, he let the snake come in the garden. He didn't took care of the hedge, of the wall around. And you know how the enemy is. He's trying to turn around to see where is a gap, where is a place that he could sneak in and try to penetrate in the garden. So, we need to take care of the breaches, of the gaps that we could have in our walls. That's why in one of the prophets, I think it's Ezekiel, God is saying, I'm looking for a man who will stand at the gap yeah. on behalf of the nation so I will not destroy it. God is always looking for men to stand in the gap. So if in our walls we have gaps, this is the place where we need to be men, especially men. We are called to stand on the gap and to repair and to make sure nobody is coming in through this place. This is so important. So first sin of man, he did not stand in the gap or he did not build a wall, we don't really know, but he did not protect his garden. Second sin, he let the snake come to his wife. 
he didn't say anything, he didn't react, he didn't do anything. Third sin, he let the snakes distort the word of God. Once again, Eve was not here when God said these things. And Adam reported to her what God said. But he did not correct, he did not do anything, he did not say anything. Fourth sin of man, he let his wife eat the fruit. He didn't stop her. He didn't intervene. He didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. So what can we say? We can say that this is the passivity of Adam that led to the fall. And we need to be careful. We want to build strong families. But our families, they will be like a garden that we need to take care. We need to tend it and to keep it. And if the man in the family is passive, we are in danger. Because he is responsible before God. What happened after the fall? After the fall, God came in the garden. And Adam and Eve, they hide. They hide themselves because they are afraid. And God is calling who? Adam, where are you? Where are you? He didn't call Eve. Why? Because Adam was responsible. And we need to be very careful. And I would say something that God wanted to fill the earth with his image. But it was not by short-term implication, even if I believe in short-term outreach. But it was more by a long-term growth through the generation. Adam and Eve they have a garden and they have children, so they need to make the garden bigger. And in turn, they will have children, so they need to make the garden bigger. In turn, they will have children and the garden will become bigger and bigger and bigger until it covers the whole earth. So the garden of Eden is not just the lost paradise. The garden of Eden is the prototype of the kingdom of God. And God wanted it to fill the earth. It will happen. But this is still the strategy of the Lord. He leads us to start with our garden and to start with our different gardens. And in the next session, I will detail to you what it means for us today. What are our, our own gardens and how can we keep them and tend them in today's context? Now, I'll put a few questions on the screen and ask you to get two by twos and share, discuss, and pray for one another. This is such an important moment, and I'd like to encourage you not just to rush this question time, because this is a time that helps you to root the teaching in your heart. And many of you, you need to discuss things in order to own them. And you need to pray to involve the Lord in the process. So take the necessary time as a group to work on these questions and to process them. May the Lord bless you.